Hello everybody and welcome to this uh, Rangers review special as we look ahead to the Champions League clash between Rangers and Napoli on Wednesday night at Ibrox. I'm delighted to say we're joined by Dom, who uh, is a host of the, the popular Napoli Talk uh, podcast you can find on YouTube and also on social media. Hi Dom, thanks very much for joining us. Hi Derek, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here to talk about this really exciting game uh, midweek. Yeah, absolutely. And before we talk about the game, uh, Dom, of course, the news uh, on Sunday uh, broke that the match has been put back 24 hours uh, this week because of uh, a lack of police resources because uh, the late Queen Elizabeth is lying in state. Uh, now, it means that there will be no Napoli fans at the game at Ibrox and unfortunately also no Rangers fans at the return match in Naples uh, on October 26th. Um, really disappointing for both sets of fans who have made travel arrangements, isn't it? What's the feeling amongst Napoli supporters? I guess it's one of uh, extreme disappointment that they, they can't travel. Yeah, uh, it is. And I think it hasn't been communicated that well uh, over in Italy yeah. that the reason is that uh, Queen Elizabeth, um, I think, is still in Scotland up until... Tuesday. So that's why, um, you know, the police force is needed there because a lot of people are asking, well, how come the other games that are happening in London on that day are going on? Well, it's actually yeah. because she's she's going to be in Scotland. Um, so I'd just like to clarify that for any Napoli fans that maybe don't know those little details. Um, but yeah, for everyone that made travel arrangements, obviously it's super last minute. There must They must be extremely disappointed. The club said that they would refund tickets. I'm not sure what happens with, you know, their travel arrangements, if those will get refunded. Uh, but yeah, either way, I think it's a sh such a shame because Rangers has been out of the Champions League for a long time and people were looking forward to going to the stadium and, and experiencing the atmosphere, which we know is an extremely, you know, intense atmosphere. Um, and it's, it's a nice away day. I think all, actually, I feel like yeah. all the games that we have in this group are really nice away fixtures. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's an excellent group and it's, it's such a shame that the fans are going to miss out. And I've seen that uh, Naples politician Luigi Musto has uh, slammed UEFA and asked for a, all supporters are reimbursed their, their travel and accommodation costs. But uh, as with UEFA, I wouldn't uh, hold out much hope uh, for that, unfortunately. Um, in terms of the game and, and, and how Napoli are going to approach this one, Dom, they come into it off the back of a a thumping win against Liverpool. I think it surprised everyone uh, seeing that result. Um, did it surprise you? So the result definitely surprised me. I don't think anybody had 4-1 uh, written in, in their bets. Uh, however, the surprising thing is it's not even the result. It's that it could have been worse. Napoli missed the penalty. We hit the yeah. post. We had a ball cleared off the line. If, if it ended up with seven goals um, for Napoli... It, you know, you couldn't say it wasn't deserved almost. Um, so, yeah, but the, the result over, yeah, no one would have said that before the game. Um, I did think, though, coming into the game, because I follow the EPL quite a lot, I did think that mm -hmm. Napoli was going to dominate the game in midfield. Um, the midfield that Liverpool turned up with, Elliot Milner, uh, you know, these are guys that are either way too young uh, for yeah. certain yeah. games or way too old for certain games. And Napoli has a really strong midfield. It's, I think, their best um, asset. Uh, they've got skill. They've got physicality in, in the likes of Zielinski and Angisa. And then they've got Lobotka in the middle, who I think is an extremely, extremely good player. Uh, he dictates the tempo extremely well. He's so good at eluding pressure. And Liverpool, one thing they do is that they tend to put a lot of pressure on midfielders, right? They try to win the ball back super quickly. We've got a player who's a master at eluding that pressure, a bit like Thiago is at Liverpool or Busquets at Barcelona. So mm -hmm. if this guy turns around when Liverpool are trying to attack him, he's with, with one movement, he gets rid of, you know, one or two Liverpool midfielders and it can then start the Napoli counterattacks. And that's exactly what we did so well. Yeah. So I expected dominance, but not the result. Yeah, uh, I was speaking uh, earlier to uh, former Rangers striker uh, Marco Negri, who's uh, from Italy, of course. He said that um, they're very good at set pieces, Napoli. Now, that's an area 
uh, of the pitch where Rangers have struggled recently, lost a goal against Ajax, a very poor goal from a, a set piece. Um, what's so special about the Napoli set pieces, Dom? Uh, since Spalletti has come over last year, uh, they've been getting kind of creative. I don't think we have anyone in the team that's, you know, above average in terms of um, their abilities and set pieces. Maybe our new center back, Kim, he scored twice yeah. already this season. Um, so that's definitely a threat. But I wouldn't say we have the tallest team or the most physical team in the box. Um, but what we do have is creativity. We have all these uh, random... Uh, <laughs> random things that we do maybe like one guy is running up to the ball he he fakes it and the other guy runs up he also fakes it and the first guy comes <laughs> back and it it's all over the place right like i don't i don't even think the players know what they're doing <laughs> uh but all that chaos sometimes results in goals and uh yeah uh what we also do have is people that are outside the box that if the ball does come outside the box we've got good shooters um so yeah. that's always an extra threat as well there yeah, is it, in terms of the forward players, the likes of Lozano, Politano, is that the players that Rangers should be be wary of, do you reckon? Um, no, I think the main player that they have to be wary of is on the other wing, Kvaric Kelia. He's oh, yeah. uh, a, a new guy that basically no one knew about until three months ago. Liverpool, uh, Liverpool Napoli brought him over from Georgia, actually, yeah. and he's been phenomenal this season. He... You know, made Alexander uh, Trent Alexander Arnold look uh, like an amateur. Um, <laughs> he scored already. Is it four goals this season? Uh, Ten nutmegs, uh, a few assists. He's he's incredible, um, and I think he's he's a player that has a real chance of, I think, winning uh, the youth Ballon d'Or this season. And wow. yeah, I actually do think he's that good, and he's on the left wing for us. So yeah, that's the main guy. Yeah, and of course, they've started the, the Serie A season really well as well, haven't they? What's the feeling that this season in terms of the league, Dom? Is, is there a sense that Napoli can go all the way this year? I mean, Napoli fans um, have been disappointed a lot in recent years in the league. We've come very close a few times when we were competing against Juventus. Even last season, we started the season with eight wins in a row and ended up losing the title uh, we were tied first with eight games remaining and we ended up third um so we've we've been disappointed a few times it's very difficult for us i think to win the league because um the pressure is so high in the city and the players often crumble under that pressure so i'm i'm gonna say it's too early to say but definitely the expectation is a top four finish because of also the teams that are around us i don't think Juventus, Inter have quite, you know, got everything working already. Yeah. So a top four finish, I think, is still the objective for us. Yeah. And what's the feeling amongst the fans about uh, Luciano Spalletti? Uh, are they right behind him and what he's trying to do there? There was a few moments uh, towards the back end of last year where we did think that actually we lost the title because of his decisions. Um, mm -hmm. He didn't play Mertens enough and whenever Mertens came on he was scoring goals so it was like why are you not playing him um there was a bit of a a bit of criticism a few weeks ago when we drew our second game at home against a newly promoted team and he basically changed formation and changed six players um so you know we we were asking ourselves why are you making such drastic changes um at such an early point in the season there's no reason to do a turnaround like that so he he does do some odd things here and there which um you know so that's a doubt that we have about him but at the same time he's managed to navigate uh such difficult moments uh, in in recent times with the departures of Insigne, Koulibaly, Mertens, Ospina, yeah. Fabian Ruiz um he's managed to deal with that quite well and so I I, I still trust him I think a lot of people still trust him that he's going to uh, at least deliver top four. Yeah. And is there any weaknesses that, that, that Rangers can, can look to exploit, do you think? Yeah, our goalkeeper, I think. Um, mm -hmm. So he's a really good shot stopper. Uh, mm -hmm. He has incredible reflexes in goal, but he is very, very, very hesitant in coming out to collect crosses. 
um, coming out in one-on-one -on -one situations. So if they can play, if Rangers can play those really difficult balls where the goalkeeper is sort of 50-50 on whether he has to come out or not, chances mm -hmm. are a goalkeeper is not going to come out and Rangers can exploit that. So if I were Rangers, I'd be crossing the ball a lot and I'd be trying to play your striker through on goal because our keeper is not going to come out. And that that's that's very um, that's a, that's where a lot of the goals that we concede come from, actually. Yeah. Um, he's also not the best at distributing play. He's improved a lot this season, but I feel like if Rangers really put pressure on the goalkeeper, he is prone to mistakes. So I think that's our number one weakness at the moment. Yeah, interesting. Uh, and I know uh, you, you wanted to, to learn a wee bit about, about Rangers and, and what you can expect from uh, Giovanni van Bronckhorst's side. Is there anything yeah. you, you wanted to, to find out, Dom? Well, I just, you know, last year I was so, well, over the last two years, actually, I was so impressed with Rangers. Uh, they did really well under Steven Gerrard. They obviously yeah. won the league, went quite far in the Europa League. And then they also went to the final last year of the Europa League. They beat a PSV team in the, you know, qualification rounds. So why, why have they suddenly, you know, gone through a, a bit of a tough patch in recent results? Obviously, they lost against uh, Ajax. They lost against Celtic. So what's, what's happened there? Has anything changed? Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting one. A lot of people are scratching their, their heads. Uh, two heavy defeats, two 4-0 losses. The first time, I think, in about 40 years that that's happened. Um, so a lot of pressure from the fans on the manager. Um, the, I mentioned set pieces earlier. It's something that, that they're not uh, defending properly. I think they need to go back to basics. It's a mixture of zonal and man marking that they deploy. Mm -hmm. And um, they're just losing a lot of goals. They lost uh, two goals against PSV actually uh, from set pieces. Um, and the players, uh, a lot of supporters felt that the uh, a lot of fans, sorry, felt that um, they should have strengthened the squad after that victory in Eindhoven against PSV in, in the transfer deadline. Um, and they, they wanted a right winger and a striker, um, and they never, they never um, brought anyone in. So a lot of fans feel that the squad maybe isn't equipped for that step up. I know they did so well last season in the Europa League reaching the final. So unlucky not to win the trophy, um, losing on penalties, but... Um, many feel that the Champions League is a step up when you're playing the uh, higher calibre opposition, as we found out last week. Um, and Van Bronckhorst actually said in his uh, post-match interview after Ajax, he said you need hundreds of millions of pounds to compete with uh, these sides. So uh, there's a bit of a deflation amongst it, the Rangers fans dominant right now because um, they're not performing as well as we know they can do. And uh, it doesn't make life any easier that they see Celtic across the city doing so well and um, five points clear in the league. So there's a bit of doom and gloom amongst the range of supporters right now. So um, hopefully that, that that can ease. But I mean, it's going to be a really tough test on Wednesday. Don't, don't get any tougher, I think. Um, I read uh, in the bookies, actually, one bookmaker uh, offering four to one for Rangers to win at home, which is quite incredible. But um, yeah, they're in a, a poor run of form just now. Um, and I'm sure that's what Giovanni Van Bronckhorst and the coaching staff will be trying hard to, to put right. But defensively, just now, Rangers are gettable. They look very weak defensively. A um, lot of injuries as well. A lot of players out uh, for long, uh, sustained periods of time. Um, and uh, they just don't seem to be uh, clicking at the moment. So it's probably the right time for Napoli to play them, play them, I would say. Yeah, I mean, two things I like to say. Number one is I really feel for Rangers and any team that had to go through the uh, qualification rounds in the Champions League because obviously those games end so late, so close to the end of the transfer window that teams yeah. for you know ninety percent of ninety five percent of the transfer window they don't know whether they're going to receive Champions League money or not, and then they've got what is it five days maybe not even to adapt their strategy or conclude deals and you know some players that you you have lined up maybe they've you know uh, gone tired of waiting they they move to other clubs. Um, so it's really difficult for, for clubs yeah. in that situation um, to program their season. And obviously, you, f you start feeling those effects um, as the season progresses. Napoli went through a summer like that a few years ago. So I can, I can feel uh, for the Rangers fans. Um, yeah. But hopefully that money is invested well into the team come the next transfer window. Um, and then the other thing that I like to say is about whether this is a good time to play Rangers. 
I don't know. I'm always wary of teams that have gotten, you know, not one, but two heavy defeats. I think Rangers are a proud team. Uh, the fans will be excited for the first Champions League game at home in a long, long time. Um, so, you know, they will come out uh, and play against us. You know, I don't think Rangers is the type of team that's going to um, come out mellow. You know, they're, they're going yeah. to... They're going to be fired up. They're going to want to prove that those are two two random results, or they're they're two results that they can overcome. So, yeah, the crowd will be right behind them. So, I I, I would have rather played Ajax than Rangers, uh, to be fair. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't think anyone is, I don't think anyone is is necessarily happy about the the two big defeats that that Rangers had. You know, it's they're, they're a proud team, so. It's gonna yeah, be tough. But, yeah, you just hope that, um, like you say, the Napoli squad is, is generally, I mean, it's a talented squad, but it's a young squad and you just don't know. Maybe the, the, the Ibrox crowd can be that that 12th man. Um, we've seen it last year in, in the Europa League run where the crowd really played their part and you heard players come out and say that it gave them that extra 10% of energy and um, they really did uh, have a big role to play. So you just hope that they turn up for, for this one. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think they'll need the crowd, that's for sure, because they've gone up against a, a real top quality side. So, but yeah, looking forward to it, Dom. In terms of score prediction, if I put you on the uh, on on the spot here, how do you think it's ending up? Uh, so one thing you should know is that Neapolitans uh, tend to be quite superstitious, okay. and uh, we believe in jinxes. So, oh, I personally wow. don't don't believe in that. But if I if I go out on camera a few days before and say that Napoli will win, and then we don't win. <laughs> I know where they're. I know who they're gonna blame. So um, I'm gonna. So I'm okay, gonna say a two-two draw. Sitting on the fence, we don't, we don't mind it. I think the Rangers fans would, would be quite happy with that. I've got to say. And, and before we go, I, I know you you host a um, a Napoli-based uh, podcast as well. If people want to um, find out more, where, where can they find you online? Yeah. So basically, my 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 YouTube channel is called Napoli Talk, uh, but it's not in Italian. It's in English. It's meant to. Um, sort of bridge the gap between the club and the English-speaking fans who don't get maybe an opportunity to uh, have their team analyzed on televisions just like the Italian fans would. Um, so I try to bring a, I would try to bring those fans closer to the club. I do a tactical analysis. Um, we talk about all things that happen in the game, uh, and, and it's quite fun. So if you are interested in general tactical analysis or you know napoli if you want to get to know them a bit better then uh yeah check it out napoli talk on youtube fantastic excellent well it's been great having you on dom and enjoy the game on uh, wednesday may the best you team too. win yeah it's been great thank you guys and enjoy the